Hello, and welcome to the Bite Size DMing series. Today, I'd like to give all those overtired, hardworking DMs a break and present you with the option to run a drop and go dungeon. In this video, I will be going through the dungeon's content. Running this dungeon should take anywhere from 1 to 3 hours depending on how you run it. The dungeon begins on a dirt path leading out of the forest from a small village from which your adventure had started. If you'd like, the village can be the place where the quest to explore this dungeon came from, and if you need a name for the village, I would recommend Yero. The party will find themselves in a grassy clearing where a large statue of a soldier and a boulder are the most notable objects around them. Players can inspect the statue with a DC-10 investigation check to find the following written in common as a warning to all. Where flames lay rest and webs make bed, leave this mouth alone should you prefer life over dead. The boulder hides nothing, but players can inspect it if they choose so. The entrance to the cave is hidden behind a wall of moss and leaf that can be discovered with a DC-13 investigation check, upon which you may read, The entrance of this dark and drafty cave is shown to be without any light. You hear a small squeaking sound behind the veil of darkness. Players will need dark vision or a source of light to see into the cave. However, hidden behind an alcove in the roof of the cave awaits a swarm of bats to surprise the adventurers. As the players get down the hall, they will enter a small circular room where they will find two humanoid skeletons and a blood splatter. Two humanoid looking skeletons laid sprawled out on the ground. Nothing but bones have been left of them. There also seems to be a splatter of blood near the bodies as well that appears to trail off further into the cave. After rounding the corner, the players will find themselves in a wide open space, as the only source of light being a small fire surrounded by a few goblins. Read. As you enter a much roomier portion of the cavern, your eyes drift to the light of a campfire, and your ears pick up on the sound of voices. To the south of the room where the fire lay is a group of goblins. They appear to be cooking something over a spit roast. Players can attempt to sneak around the goblins with a successful group stealth check of 14. If not, the group is noticed by the goblin leader and shaman, Urk Gallican. Should players find themselves caught by Urk and his band, they can attempt to persuade Urk to leave them alone by either intimidating them, persuading them, or bribing them. To intimidate Urk, you'll need to pass a DC 18 intimidation check. To persuade them, you'll need to pass a DC 15 persuasion check, although this will result in them following you to find a moment when your party is at its weakest and attack. And to bribe them, you will need at least 5 gold, although again, this will result in them following you to find a moment when you are weakened and attack the party. After passing through the goblin area, players will find themselves turning a corner and coming to their first choice. Read. Looking westward, you will find a very slanted cliff side which elevates up to a level platform. The party can climb up the slope with a DC 15 athletics check, or they can proceed northward to the sound of running water. If the party proceeds northward, the path leads them on towards an open cave area. The party will begin to hear the splishing sound of water at their feet as they enter. Read. Facing northwest, you see a small glow of light across the end of the room. To the east, you see small glowing pink lights lighting up the hall, as well as that same light to the northeast of the room as well. The party has entered into the older section of the cave. Directly northward is an exit that has been collapsed for quite some time by a cave-in. Should the party choose to go right, they can either discover a pathway immediately eastward, or if they follow the wall to their right, they will find another path leading eastward as well at the other end of the cave. The western half of the cave is made up by large puddles and a small river flowing through the cave. Across the embankment, there appears to be some glowing ruins that light up part of the wall. Should someone make it across the river to read the ruins, they will need to pass an arcana check of 14 to determine that the sword of the serpent is necessary to slay the dragon and the shield of flames will provide great aid against the beast. There is also a small chest containing the blade of the serpent inside. Choosing to go into one of the east leading pathways, the party will find more pink glowing crystals scattered along the halls. Read. 
The hall is lit up by the glow of these pink fluorescent rocks that jut out of the ground, and the only other notable feature of this path is the layer after layer of cobwebs covering the area. Either of these two passages they take will run them into two giant spiders that lay and wait for prey. After facing the spiders and turning the corner, the cave will lead the adventurers into an open pathway leading westward again into a spacious room. This is where Gabex the weaver, a huge spider, has made her nest. Read. You enter a dome-like area, also covered from top to bottom in webs. The lower half of the room seems to be carpeted with large, sharper stones, while the upper half is covered in a rocky, gravel-like texture. Eight beady eyes glow out at you from the other side of the poorly lit area. In order to obtain the Shield of Flame, the party must search the corpses Gabix has been feeding on to find it under one of the lifeless corpses. Gabix cannot be reasoned with and will attack all that come into her lair. Should the party proceed westward from the previous fork in the road, they will need to climb up the steep slope. After getting up it, read, you find at the top of the leveled plateau an open entrance going further into the cave. This seems to be where the draft is coming from. This is also where the dragon that rests here has made its lair. Try to convey that the atmosphere here feels different. For example, your heart begins to race as you feel the pressure of the room rise. Or, the heat in this area intensifies as your skin begins to sweat, and you feel quite uncomfortable in your equipment very quickly. Heading into the opening from this point, the party will be entering the dragon's lair. Read. You enter a fumy and noticeably hotter room. The rocky walls seem to bounce around the warm air as the floor spills with openings revealing molten liquid boiling out of them. Light pours into the cavern from the wide open hole sitting about a hundred feet up, and on the other end of the room you find a great red beast laying on a pile of treasures. This battle will have a few elements such as the lava pit and the fact that Cinder the dragon will attack the party head on due to its prideful nature. The lair consists of hot floors not walkable by bare feet. Finally, there are several open pits of magma that will on occasion spew fire at the party. The cave itself has a wide open top from which the dragon will fly in and out of. The rear of the cave hosts a large alcove where the dragon keeps its hoard of treasure. I hope you enjoyed this week's content. Head down to the link in the description for the entire PDF module for this drop and go dungeon as well as usable maps for the area. Please like the video and subscribe for more free quality content, and I'll see you next week.